Well, as you can tell, what I want to speak on tonight is honoring all people. Some of you know or have at least heard of, if not familiar with, the comedian. I believe he's passed on. I don't know for sure about that, but I think Rod, Rodney Dangerfield's uh, yeah. passed on. Uh, he had a famous line, I don't get no respect, I tell you. I don't get no respect. That was a common refrain of his to be, of course, funny. Aretha Franklin, now you do show how old you are, if you remember R-E-S-P-E-C-T. You aren't that old. You weren't born when that song was out. <laughs> but it's an oldie but goldie to where you can be in your 20s and 30s, and I know that song. And, of course, you weren't around when it's on the top 40 as I was. But anyway, what's this thing called respect? Everybody, I need a little respect when I get home. Uh, you know, I'm, you know I'm a big Packers fan, and then football, and Matt will bear this out, he's a big Packers fan too. You know, you can like any team if you're, if some other football team is your favorite. How many times do I hear these guys talk about we're not getting any respect? We're 14 point underdogs, okay, because you're not any good. No, that's not it. We're not getting any respect. <laughs> They're dissing us, is how we in a slang way put it. You know, hey, what is up with that? We're in the NFL just like they're in the NFL. Where's the respect? You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> well, it's one of those things that seems to grate on people. It seems to be something we're all at least familiar with personally or familiar with it if it's not us personally. The idea of not getting any respect. It seems to be, as a general statement I'll make, all people want respect. And for many, that seems to be about all they want. <laughs> I just want some respect. <laughs> well, whatever it is, I'm, I'm, I'm here to say all people need it, and maybe all people want it, but whether they do or don't, I'm here to say most everybody, if not everybody, wants respect, a little respect. Well, for people to get respect, somebody's got to be given it, and that's the lesson for tonight. Let's go on. No, not yet, yet, yet. Let me preach to you a little more. I want to talk a little bit about giving people respect. Because if everybody's thinking we ought to receive it, and that's been my first two or three minutes of, uh, of uh, talk with you, is everybody seems to want it. That's what I want. I sing about it. I, I moan about it. I long for it. I don't like it if you don't respect me and you don't respect me. And Well, somebody's got to be giving it for everybody to be getting it. You, you get my point. And that's the lesson for us. We need to respect all people. Honor all people. That ain't in the Bible. Yes, it is. Honor all people. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said what I just said. It's right there. God said it before Whit said it. Honor everybody. Well, now maybe it's a little better to be thinking why it is everybody wants it. But whether they do or don't think about it from God's standpoint, that's the way I'm looking at it. God wants us to honor all people. Let me show you some scriptures that... Uh, will be supportive of what I'm speaking of before I really get stuck in. At the end of the verse right there, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. He can't, Peter can't even finish the verse before he begins to specify one area where you may want to start doing that. Honor everybody. Honor the king. He's, the Bible's not through, but that'll get us started. God expects us to honor those who are sitting in places of government rule. In this case, it's called a king. It could be some other title for the person in civil government, but whatever it is, honor government rulers. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as to the weaker vessel. Ephesians 5, However, let each one of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she honors and respects her husband. Well, that's going to be quite nice to have two in a marriage, and hopefully there's only two, two in a marriage, each of them honoring one another. Honor your father and your mother. Well, everybody's got one. Some are better than others, I know, but still, unless, unless your parents are past, as mine both are, you need to honor your father and your mother. And you know what? I even still honor my father and mother, and they're gone, in the sense of honoring their name and honor discussion any time it comes up about your parents, even though they've been dead for a while. Let all those who are under a yoke as slaves regard their own masters as worthy of all honor. Uh oh now we're getting into the rocky area. Now people who are slaves have to honor their masters so that the name of God and the teaching might not be revived. And even in, your, in our country where slavery is no more, I think, I think the principle still applies. Employees are to respect their employers. And that's milding it down somewhat 
from slavery, but at least principally, I think you can see it. I know you think I'm through, I'm not. Honor widows who are widows indeed. I'm just showing you when he starts off with honor all people, he also in scripture begins to break it down into some areas for us to think about. For instance, and I'm not reviewing all the ones previously said, but for instance, honor widows who are truly widows. No, I'm not done yet. Let the elders who rule well be considered of worthy, worthy of double honor. <laughs> and that's not Ron and I just looking for a little extra, but my point is I don't have to say it. You read it for yourself. The elders of a church ought to be uh, regarding their elders as worthy of double honor. By the way, not on the slide behind me, but in my notes, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 12 says the same thing. In other words, respect those who are over you in the Lord. And you do. I'm not preaching to people that need to hear this because you're not doing it. It reinforces what you're doing. Honor those who are leading you in the church. Now I'll be done after this. Uh, as you can see, most everybody needs honor uh, and it's expected of God to be given it. Hebrew or Romans 13, 7 says, pay to all that's owed them. And in, 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 watch the breakdown. Taxes, if it's taxes owed. Revenue, if it's that. And then respect, to whom respect is owed. Honor, to whom honor is owed. And we started with what? Everybody. I owe everybody? Yes, you owe everybody. It's not a matter of, okay, I hate this commandment, but I gotta do whatever God says. I'd start loving it if I were you because it's owed to them. God has put it into a realm of you owe them honor. You owe them respect. You know what it reminds me of too? And I think it's in this ballpark of Romans right here where he says, you don't owe nobody anything, you know, in a sense of monetarily speaking, except to love them. In that sense, I'm always indebted. It's like my credit card never gets paid up in love. That I'm always short on. I can't overdo it. I can't max out. I can max out the credit card. But I can't max out my love debt to everyone. And the same here with honor. Basically, it would be the same thing said of honor and respect. You can never get to a point. That's enough respecting. I don't want to respect anybody anymore. You can't ever get there. Not in please God, you can't get there. All right. So with all that in mind, let's begin to make some application of all of this. We're commanded by God, I'm just repeating what I've already said, that we're to honor all people. And that includes what? Or who I, is a better way of saying that. And that includes who? What? All people. <laughs> it includes everybody. I don't know how anyone would be an exception to that. This is where it's going to get tough. I don't have any problem honoring my parents. Now, some of you do because you have some pretty lame parents, and I, I, I'm, I'm sympathetic a little bit. In fact, I hope I'm sympathetic a lot, and I'm sorry to hear that. I really am. I'm sorry to hear that. But my point is this. There are some folks that we are expected to honor, and it's a little easier than with others, and I'll just start with that one. It's easier for me to honor my parents than it is. We'll get to those folks in just a minute. But let's start at a safe area and go from there. All right? I'm going to have probably a little easier time honoring my parents. I just don't have any problem with that. I don't have any difficulty honoring a judge. And I haven't appeared before a judge very often. <laughs> but if I do, I'm going to call him your honor. And you don't have to make me say that. Because I don't want him to throw the book at me. And so I'm in a position where it would be best if I say, yes, your honor, and then, yes, I will take my baseball cap off, and yes, I'll find my, if you say sit down, I'll sit down. If you tell me to stand and rise, and then whatever, I'll stand and rise. Yes, your honor. I'm not going to say, hey, judgey, what's up, man? No, I'm not going to talk to him that way. He deserves honor, and he's going to get it. And I'm going to talk like it, too. I honor those kind of folks. It's not hard for me to do. Now, this one is, is going to be one you think that I'm, you know, trying to get some brownie points from. But I don't have any hard time honoring my wife. I don't. I really don't have a hard time. I may have a hard time doing some things better, but I won't say that, that I can't honor her. Oh, I think that's not the hardest thing to do because I love her so much. It's easy to do, so to speak. You know what I mean? It's easy for me to do. And she would probably say the same thing. It's mutual. Well, you see what I'm saying? This idea of honoring all people is not too hard to preach when it's certain ones that we start with. Parents, uh, judges, uh, somebody like your husband or wife and so forth. But let's keep going. We're not through yet. We need to also love people that I don't think deserve it. Hmm? 
Okay, now we're getting rocky area. Now we're getting difficult because he or she doesn't deserve it because of something they've said, done, or just the way they carry themselves. Chemistry's not there. I just don't like him. He's not my kind of guy. You still have an obligation along these lines. So what makes it so hard? Well, some people are too full of themselves. Some people are too opinionated. Some people are egocentric. Some people are, and you just go on and on and on and on and on, talking about things that just sort of somewhat rub you the wrong way. I just don't like that. It's just, it's not me. I'm not like that. I don't like other people that are that way. Well, here's what I'm going to suggest as our first clue as to how to do better. And I hope I've already sold you on the need that, that God expects of us to do. It. Please don't make me argue that point again. We must honor everybody. I can honor my folks. I can honor my husband or wife or my children or whatever. Okay, how about people that don't deserve it or people that are aggravating to me? And I just don't care for their type. It's just not my nature to like these folks. Well, here's the first clue as to how to do something about that. And it's going to start with you. And that is, and I know you're going to smile and say, that's easy for you to say. But God said it first, so smile only if you will at God. Start thinking of everybody else as being better than you. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's pretending. Okay, fine. I'll use your word. Start pretending that they're better than you. There could be an argument made that they are better than you, but let's just go with thinking of them as that way, even if they're not. I know, for instance, I'm better than them when it comes to money. They've got zero, and I've got hundreds and thousands. I'm richer. I'm more capable. I'm prettier or handsome. Whatever. Whatever you put status on as making yourself superior, try to diminish that and make it to where they are others. Do I have this on a slide? I do not. So I'll tell it to you because I won't throw it up there. I don't have it there, there to throw it. But listen to God talk before with it. Let, this is Philippians 2, 3. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. I read it slow, not because your intelligence can't catch it if I go fast. I just wanted to sink in what he said. I was borrowing biblical language when I said, you want to do better about honoring everybody? Start by thinking everybody's superior. That's why I do it to the judge. Because outside the courtroom, I'm going to say, he puts on his pants just like I do, one day, one day at a time. Where did the honor go? I'm outside the courtroom. He can't do anything to me out here. In there? Yes, Your Honor. Back some time ago, a Facebook friend told me, and I don't remember who it was, he said, I call it just plain humility. That's the end of his quote. I just call it plain humility. And I agree with him, and I agree with him now as I repeat it. We can honor and respect all people when we humbly think of all people as better than us. All right. But surely this can't include sinners. Rank sinners. I don't know why we have to put the word rank in front of it. But sinners. You know why? Because I think we're trying to make them as being worse than me. Rank sinners. Like you're not a rank sinner. Let's just use the word sinner and forget the rank part. Oh, that includes me then. Ah, ah. Now's where we're getting somewhere. Brian, I think it was I was speaking with, and Sean maybe, or it may have been somebody else. I do have conversations with people on the week. I can't remember who I said what to. You can nod if it was you. Uh, if Jesus could eat the Passover during his memorial meal, with Judas Iscariot, a thieving traitor. And if he could get down on his knees and he could watch this dirty man's dirty feet, this man who personally was doing him so much evil right at that moment, then I think I can respect every sinner. Thank you, Ron. Amen. I believe that to be so. If Jesus can do it, which got a problem if he can't do it? I can't do that. I cannot do it to that guy, that woman. I can't do it. They are nothing more than scheming sinners that are trying to do me harm and dirty as Judas was. As Judas was. Now, that doesn't mean I have to respect their sin. A lot of people don't want you to make the distinction. You can't respect me if you don't respect the sinfulness I've chosen to be engaged in. No, no, no. Jesus did not in, in any way condone what Judas was doing. No, it wasn't. He, there was no condonement of what he was doing, but he respected him as a human being, as a person in his presence, in, in, in his circle at the time, uh, at, at, the, at the Lord's Supper, at the Passover. 
So I'm not going to fall for that bit of talk that you can't respect me if you don't respect what I'm doing. Nah, that's not the case. I respect every living soul. I respect every sinning soul. And that person could, except for the grace of God, be the same as me or be the same as him. So don't dare for a moment think that, well, we we never could be that. And see, this, this is where we start putting this rank sinner business into it, as if we're sinners, but not like they're sinners. You know, well, that may be true to an extent. I'm not saying that everybody sitting at the table, all 12 of them were up to the exact same no good as Judas. No, I understand Judas was doing things worse than maybe Bartholomew. I just picked the name out of the air. And, you know, Andrew or something. You know, I understand that. But there is a sense in which they were all the same sinner, though, in another sense of looking at it. So don't dare for a moment think, well, I can never do that. What he did. Are you sure about that? We all stumble. We all fall short. We're all sinners. I respect all sinners, for I respect me. I am one of them. Moving on. Those who do us wrong. Sounds similar to the first one, but it's getting a little bit... We're, tu we're, we're turning up the heat is what we're doing. Honoring people that are doing me wrong right now. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You surely can't mean people that are personally doing me wrong. And my question and response is, and why not? I'm putting, I'm turning the table around. Yes, you suggest it can't be that God expects me to honor people that are personally doing me wrong while they're doing me wrong. And I'm going to say, you go first. Why not? Why not? And I'm not trying to be, you know, uh, trying to be funny here in the sense of saying you go first. I mean, seriously, you're the one proposing the idea that that doesn't qualify for a person to be honored. God said honor everybody, but he didn't mean people that are doing me wrong at the time. I'm just going to ask you, why not? A few years ago, a brother out of state, so it's nobody you would know, and I don't, I'm don't. i not trying to keep a big secret. I just mean it's not anybody you're familiar with. He was in contact with me a couple times about his marital difficulties. I don't, I don't think he minds sharing this. Like I said, you don't even know who this is. He was struggling with his wife, and uh, things have really gone haywire in his relationship. And listen to this. This is a quote. With... I've been devastated beyond belief, and I've tried everything to restore our marriage. I've been met by contempt, anger, hate, and bitterness. Now, I'm in no way perfect, but I cannot believe that this is the way one person should treat another, especially when they're both Christians. I say all this not to solicit your sympathy, but to respond to your Facebook question. Yes, all deserve respect. Through all her wrath, I've continued to honor my wife to serve her and to respect her, not because it was easy or fun or even my idea. I did it because I believe that's how God wants us to act and treat each other even under difficult circumstances. I'm still quoting, perhaps especially under difficult circumstances. Now we're really getting down to the rubber hitting the road testing of whether we will comply. I told you it'd be easier to just honor my mom and dad. See, I, honor, I kept the commandment. I honored my parents. I'm not saying that's a piece of cake for everybody, but it's a piece of cake for most people. You know, it's going from there that gets to be dicey. A couple more and done. This one is, you can see where the emphasis is, honoring all kinds of people. All kinds of people. We must respect, for instance, all races of people. And may I just suggest if everybody honored everybody like the Bible said they ought to honor everybody, there'd be no racism. There wouldn't be any. Racism, to some extent, is bigger than what I'm saying, but its part, at least involved in it, is not respecting whoever it is you've got a racial problem with. Here's another one. Honoring both sexes equally. There can be no sexism in the commandment to honor everybody. Here's one that I know you'll think strange and out of place honoring children. There can be no abortion and no child abuse with this commandment. Honor everybody. I like the Oriental and I've never gone to China or Japan or any Oriental place before. I've gone to a lot of places in the world, but that's not one of them. And I would think I would like it. It may just be an outward sign, but outwardly we're demonstrating somewhat respect. Yes, now, we didn't like maybe everybody bowing before everybody, but my point is I like generally the practice. <laughs> it's a demonstration of honor and respect. 
Olden days before me, by the way, before me, older days before me, you would tip a hat to a lady. I know you had to watch an 1830 movie to see that. <laughs> I like that, tipping a hat to a lady. When I lived in England for two years, I didn't own a car. I just rode uh, buses and subways. They call them underground tubes. When I was uh, doing public transport, you had plenty because that's all I rode, meaning I'm every day all over the place on them. I'm not just once in a while using a bus or a train or whatever. I'm on all the time. Amazing to see the honor and respect for people that are either a woman or handicapped or an elderly person when it came to giving them your seat. I love to see that. And, and, and it happened a lot. I don't want to make it sound like we'll just, we need to be more like the British. No, I, I don't, London's a hugely cosmopolitan city. People from all over the place. So it wasn't just a bunch of locals. It was just typically a thing to see. I don't mean to say there were no exceptions. I'm sure there was. I try to be myself and I'm an American. I'm not even the locals, but I'm here. Get up if you see that there's no seats much left and here comes an elderly man giving your seat. And you stand holding onto a pole while you ride on this. <laughs> Did you know this in, in the Bible? This is said by God. I'll read it slow. You shall stand up before the great head and honor the face of an old man. I'm not going to read. And you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. Notice how he sticks himself into your business. And we can't mind other people's business, but God can mind all of our businesses. And when he says, stand up, show respect, honor the old man, I'm the Lord. Oh, I get the impression that this is a reflection on what we think of him when we don't. He's reminding them, get up, show some respect, man. This is an older person. This is a man that's gray-headed. Stand up and honor him. Remember who it is you're needing to respect. Me. I'm the one that told you to do that. And that's how it started, by the way. When he started out, quote, you will stand up. You shall stand up. Leviticus 19.32, if you're wondering. Where is that? Okay, I'm about to close, but I'm not. This is about a five-minute closing. So. <laughs> the week. We need to honor sinners. We need to honor those who do us wrong. All kinds of people. And in particular, here at the last, the weak. Honoring all people has to include people who cannot sufficiently help themselves. Or, change it slightly, they can't do much by way of respecting you in response. Now, I don't mean they can't say a word or do a thing, but they are just very less fortunate than you. They're very disabled. They're not able to do much by way of response. They're so weak. And you, me, we need to honor them too. I must respect the weak even though they're lacking in strength. Let me word it negatively. Romans 14 says that strong in faith must respect those that are weak in faith. Listen to this. Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat. That's in verse 3. And then later in verse 10. Why do you show contempt of your brother? Let me give you context. In the context, he's talking about people who have developed, he calls them strong, those that have developed strength and faith, strength and understanding of the will of God, and then there's those that are not so strong and those that are struggling. Let's just imagine something here. They've just been converted recently. Let's just put them in that park, or that ballpark. We call it. Let's put them in that ballpark. They've just been converted. He says, watch it, watch it, watch it. Don't show contempt for them. Don't despise them because they're not where you are. You strong ones, show you're strong by bearing with them and being respectful of them. Just another way of saying, saying don't respect them, though they're weak. So I've got to fulfill the commandment to honor all people by honoring those who are weak in godly knowledge and faith. You know the answer to that. And the answer is yes. Yes. Let me say in the, in the spiritual vein for just another moment or two. I have to honor people in the church who seem to be less honorable. Listen to this. This is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 23 and following. I quote, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker, meaning not just your physical body, but the physical body representative of the spiritual body of Christ. Those who seem to be weaker, man, I can't talk the way the Bible does. Those people in the body, those members of the body that seem to be weaker, here it comes, they're indispensable. I do not believe that. And Whit needs to work on that because the Bible says, yes, they are. They are indispensable. I'm sitting there saying we probably do just as well without them. They're a drag on us. 
That's quit talking. That's not God. And I'm, I'm back to the reading. On those parts of the body that we think, here's our word for the hour, on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, what do we do? We bestow the greater honor. Our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our, our more presentable parts do not need and require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it. And that there be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer. If one member is honored, oh, there's our word again. If one member is honored, we all honor. We all honor together or rejoice is the word. So there in the spiritual vein of faith and knowledge and fellowship and fellow members in the church, we're called upon to practice honor and respect for those that are weaker. Now a word about people that are physically weak. What do you mean? I mean people that are infirm. They're handicapped. They're broken in their body or their mind. They are maimed, maybe from war. They are cancer victims. They are people with developmental disabilities. They're people who used to, but now no longer have their mental faculties. Maybe it was due to injury or a car accident, or maybe they're just getting old and that sometimes happens. No matter, no matter how weak and infirm, they must be respected. Amen. Amen. See if I got, I think I'm, I'm pretty, I checked earlier to be sure I had a 20. Yeah, I got one. Okay. This is a pretty new, I'm not saying it's brand new, but it's pretty uh, brand new 20. Pretty, you know, pretty fresh. You can tell. Anybody want it? Ron says he'll take it. All right. Still want it? <coughs> Still want it? You guys are so clever, you know where I'm headed with this. I'll just read my notes. No matter what I do to the money, you still want it because it does not decrease its value. It's still worth $20. Many times in our lives, people are crumpled. They're dropped to the ground and the dirt is ground into their lives in a way, sometimes their fault by decisions they've made or maybe it's just circumstances that they fell into. But no matter what's happened or what will happen, they never lose their value. Dirty or clean, crumpled or finely creased, they're still priceless to God, and I did not overstate that. They are priceless to God. You don't know that. Yes, I do. Because he says, what will a man give in exchange for his soul if he gains the whole world? They're priceless. The whole world is not an exchange for your soul. You're, more, you're worth more than the whole world, no matter how crumpled you are. All right. How we support the weak, I think, tells a lot about us more than it tells us about them. <clears throat> how we regard them, how we honor them, how we treat them, even if they're completely helpless. And let's start with the unborn children. Abortion is the highest form of disrespect. The highest. An innocent, helpless baby having his life snuffed out by his mother. Where's the natural affection? No, change it. Where's the honor? Where's the respect? Let's go to the other end of life, euthanasia. May be okay with animals, and some of you animal lovers will probably disagree, but it may be okay to put a horse down sometimes, but people aren't animals, and we have to show respect. Respect. We must not, not cast off the elderly. It's called euthanasia. Psalm 71.9 the Bible says, do not cast me off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength is spent. So I can, that's the end of the reading. I can honestly say, God won't. The question is, will we? Will you? Will I? Will we? We mustn't. All right, thank you. Listen very kindly and know the $20 is going to go <laughs> love, love one another. Love one another with brotherly affection. I love this translation. Don't ask me which one it is. 
Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another, showing. Outdo one another, showing honor. Race to be the winner at being the most given to doing it. Brothers and sisters and friends, let's do this. I urge you to do this. Let's outdo one another in showing honor to all people, even as God has said. Thank you very much.